Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is Amani Al-Aida from Surveillance Department, uh, the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control in Healthcare Facilities and Ministry of Health. Uh, our lecture today it will be about optimizing patient safety with, with central line bundles. In this lecture, we will go through this outline, definitions of central line bundles, Purpose of central line bundles, significance in healthcare relationship to patient safety, benefits of central line bundles, component of central line insertion bundle and maintenance bundle, compliance monitoring, and education and training as well. Our objective in this lecture will focus on both aspects the healthcare provider as professionals and the patient safety. So, for healthcare providers, will provide them with the professional and comprehension of central line bundles and their partial function to ensure patient safety, and provide the practical insight into implementation for evidence-based practice for reducing central line associated bloodstream infection, which is eclampsia. Healthcare professional will be able to recognize the importance of this bundle and the efficiency, and they will have an actionable strategies to enhance compliance, and that will give improved patient outcome and save our healthcare environment. Clapsy is the main focus in all over the world in all healthcare facilities, and the primary goal for each healthcare facilities is patient safety and optimizing the patient safety by preventing any health associated infection and one of the most important focus is eclapsy. What does eclapsy mean? Eclapsy is a primary bloodstream infection in a patient who had a central line or umbilical catheter. When we say primary bloodstream infection that means it's not a secondary infection, it's not related to any other infection at other site on the body or other specimen. Uh, what does the central line mean? Central line is an intravascular catheter that will terminate at the heart or one of the great vessels. It's used for medicating and infusion fluid nutrient and also for taking blood sample and to monitor the hemodynamic states for the patient. Uh, there is a four different type for uh, central line, as we can say, up to the site of insertion. It can be the peripheral, uh, the pec line, or subclavian line, or intrajugular line, or the femoral line. And the most peripheral site is the subclavian site, which is uh, associated with minimum uh, number of uh, incidents of infection. Lapsy prevention and minimizing is a global focus. And Optimizing patient safety, it's the primary goal for all healthcare facilities in all over the world. Um, it's very important to ensure that the all vascular accessing that our patient needs is infection free. To ensure enhancing that outcome, it's using uh, by a way of using the bundle. Bundle is a structured way of improving the process of care and patient outcomes. It's a small straightforward set of evidence-based practice. It's from three to five. Um, not more that will enhance the commitment of uh, performing and applying and implementing the panels to improve a patient outcome. Uh, the patient outcomes that mentioned here, it's focusing about preventing and minimizing the infection and enhancing patient safety and good quality of care and treatment plan. Six purposes. Uh, the CLAPSI has been the focus of the healthcare facilities at the last 10 years, uh, at all over the world, not only in our kingdom. Uh, our primary goal, all the facilities, actually all healthcare facilities, their primary goal is to prevent CLAPSI. How we will prevent eclapsy? By understanding the importance of reducing the incidence of eclapsy, by ensuring the need of using the central line, it's one of the main uh, tools to prevent eclapsy and reduce it and to achieve patient safety. That will lead to our second purpose is standardization. Standardization, what Bandit actually provides the healthcare facility or healthcare providers 
standardized and consistent approach to the insertion of um, and care of central line. That will help to ensure um, the best practice for optimizing patient safety, leading us to our third purpose, which is improving patient safety. By implementing uh, the bundle and uh, by ensuring that healthcare facilities are understanding the importance of using the central line bundle and uh, reducing the collapse to enhance and optimizing the patient safety, all the healthcare facilities will follow uh, the using and the approach, the standard approach of using the central line bundle to enhance and improve the patient safety. Once we improve the patient safety, so we need in, uh, to enhance the compliance, which our fourth uh, uh, purpose. Bundle it serve uh, serve as a tool to enhance the compliance with evidence-based guidelines that will create uh, by creating a checklist. Uh, with the insertion and the maintenance that provide us a guideline to follow to improve and to, uh, to standardize the approach of uh, improving in patient safety. Enhancing compliance will give us a streamlining process. Uh, central line bundle it's a streamlined process by incorporating key components like hand hygiene, maximal barriers, precautions, skin antisepsis, and the proper site selection, and daily assessment of the line, uh, to central line. And this is uh, streamlining, uh, contributing to, to efficiency and reducing the likelihood of uh, any errors or infection. That will lead us to the sixth and uh, last level of quality improvement. Uh, once you will have the, you will use the bundle to prevent the collapse. You have the standardization approach, improving your patient safety, enhancing your compliance, and using the precaution. And that will give us quality improvement. And you, that will allow us to monitoring and compliance the outcome and will continue the assessment and the good manner of practice to improve our patient care and the environment of our patient to improve their safety and to maintain the safety of all patients in the healthcare facility. Significance in healthcare facilities. Uh, central line associated bloodstream infection is a significant and it's serious healthcare associated infection that will cause several challenges and consequences within the healthcare facilities. As we mentioned before, the collapse has been the focus at last 10 years in all over the world, not only in one healthcare facility because it's leading to a lot, a lot of challenges, a lot of consequences, like one of the most important thing. Uh, our lecture is focused on optimizing patient safety. The, and, uh, the opposite of that, it's patient morbidity and mortality. Um, uh, the present preclapsy in one facility that will lead to increase the patient morbidity and mortality. Uh, Clapsy associated with increased morbidity and mortality rate among patients Infection can lead to severe complication, including sepsis, organ failure, and death. Yes, some facilities are succeed to reduce eclapsy, but still it's a big issue and big concern. Need to follow up the central line bundles to prevent morbidity and mortality and to reduce the incidence of eclapsy. Uh, resources utilization, it's one of the main issue for the whole uh, kingdom to improve to prove that case it's a collapse or unclapsy it's a primary bloodstream infection or not you will need resources to prove that it's include uh, human resources laboratory tests and specialized equipment and that will impact on the healthcare facility and will affect the care for other patients because the focus being on 
preventing and treating one uh, health care um, associated infection, which is CLAPSI. Uh, that will lead also to consume the antibiotic. One of other challenges is antibiotic resistance. The overuse of antibiotic or the misuse of antibiotic to treat one uh, infection, it will cause the resistance of uh, antibiotic. That will develop a resistant strain of bacteria, making the infection more challenges to treat and aggressive which will lead to the increasing in the morbidity and mortality rate. That will impact on what? Impact on our quality of care. Uh, suppose we are trying to improve and optimizing the quality of care by improving the quality of care, the patient safety. But once we will have that incidence and serious infection getting by using the central line, we will affect the quality of care negatively. Uh, providing the healthcare institution uh, that kind of care or trying to enhance it by using the central line bundle, right precaution to overall patient safety practices, that to raise the quality of care. But uh, registering or having incidence of eclapsy or other infection that will affect the quality of care negatively. Increase the healthcare cost. Uh, the contributing to increase the healthcare cost that will add expense result for extending hospitalization days. Uh, one collapse case will in, uh, extend the staying at hospital by seven days, as the literature reviews shows, and uh, the additional treatment will be needed among the that uh, patient and the complication associated with the infection also need more care and more medication to use, more resources to use that will increase the cost by 15% for each patient. Uh, extended the, the hospitali uh, hospitalization stays or days, uh, it will be increased. We said already earlier the increasing of health care cost by a uh, long staying at the hospital and getting one collapse, it will increase the staying of a patient by more seven days. Some of the cases will need more than that. And we're booking a place to for other patients who's in need for it. More treatment, more uh, uh, human resources used. And it's overlapping, and that can be avoided by following the right precaution and the uh, standardized the use of central line bundles and feeling the importance of use the central line bundles and apply it to prevent this kind of consequences and challenges. Provides the patient safety. We said already the most important goal for all to provide and optimize the patient safety uh, by. Uh, having this incidence of eclapsy or other microorganism or any um, healthcare associated infection that will weak the immune system for each patient that will affect the patient's safety that will increase the high number of risk community who will gain the infection easily that's why the central line bundles it's more important and the most important approach to use to prevent and to prevent the infection and to optimize a patient safety, which is the focus for our patient safety. It's our primary goal in all over the world and in all healthcare facility. The main goal for each healthcare facility and healthcare provider either, it's to maintain a patient safety, giving good quality of care to each patient. Uh, by using the central line bundles, it will play a critical role to enhance the patient safety and preventing collapse and any associated complication or any other microorganism that will affect the use of central line. Central line use uh, it's an invasive insertion catheter that will use for medicating the patient or extracting blood with the critical cases that will admit it in ICU. So it's one of the Partial devices, you need to use um, 
infection control measure and alerting the healthcare provider to use the right manner with caring and maintaining this kind of devices to improve a patient safety. One of the tools that is provided uh, by evidence-based practice is the central line bundles, which will play a critical role in enhancing a patient safety, as we mentioned, by once it will applied uh, by the right way and the right manner and uh, in a standardization approach, which will enhance the communication and continuous improvement and savior healthcare environment and patient safety as much as possible. What's the benefit of central line bundles? Um, as we said, the, having eclapsy in one facility will give us challenges, with, uh, it will increase the cost and will reduce the quality of care. But once, if we will reduce, uh, use the central line bundles in the right way, we will reduce the infection rate, we will lower the rates of complication for patients, we will maintain the patient safety and improve the satisfaction. And the cost saving and resource utilization that will give a chance for other patients to get their care um, in the right way and manner as much as possible uh, without any overwhelming or overloading. We have five components of the central line insertion bundle. The first element in the component, which is the most important one, it's hand hygiene. The second one, it's maximal barrier precaution. It will be for both the operator and the patient themselves. And the third one, it's chlorohexidine skin and antisepsis. And the fourth one, it's the optimal catheter site selection. And the most preferred site, it's uh, subclavian pain. Uh, for the non-tunnel uh, tunneled catheters and the fifth component it's ultrasound guidance to place central venous catheter we will talk about each com uh, each element in the component one by one hygiene it's the first element in the central line insertion bundle component and it's the most important element in each bundle not only in the central line insertion bundle uh, washing hand by using the water and soap or using alcohol-based waterless product. It's preventing contamination for the central line sites, especially and preventing the bloodstream infection. Uh, when caring for central line, uh, indicating for hand hygiene, it's before and after uh, pulpiting the catheter insertion sites. The palpitation of the insertion site should not be performed after the application of antiseptic unless the aseptic technique is maintained. That means after you will clean and sterilize the site of uh, central, central line insertion, you should not palpate that area. And before and after inserting or replacing or accessing by giving medication or extracting blood, by repairing the site of the insertion, or doing dressing, you should perform hand hygiene. When the hand is visibly already solid or contaminated, hand hygiene should be performed either before and after any invasive procedure are done. One of them is the central line insertion. And in between patients, once you will done of the care for the first patient and going for the second patient, you should perform a hand hygiene. Before doing and after removing your gloves, you should perform hand hygiene even if you was wearing a gloves. A second component is the barrier precaution for, as we said, for both operator and the patient themselves. For the operator, the one who will place the central line and those who will assist the, in, in the procedure, they should wear the preco barrier precaution that it's a strict compliance. First hand hygiene and wearing cap and the mask and the sterile gown and the sterile gloves. That by certain way, the cap should cover all the hair and the mask should cover the nose and the mouth tightly. That we will prevent any contamination on the site of insertion. And these precautions are the same as for any other surgical procedure that carry, um, carries a risk of infection. 
any invasive procedure that will be have a high risk of infection we should uh, use a barrier precaution for the operator and for the patient for the patient we will apply maximal barrier precaution means covering the patient from the head to toe with the sterile drop and just we will clear or we will have a small opening for the site of insertion or the site of operation itself or once the patient have any surgical procedures that to minimize the infection as much as possible Lunohexidine skin antisepsis it's our third component in our panel it's the most important uh, step with invasive procedures like central line insertion which is proven uh, that will provide better skin antisepsis than any other antiseptic agent like helpafodin iodine solution uh, there is a specific technique that we should use it and follow it with using the chlorohexidine skin antisepsis especially with insertion uh, central line the concentration of chlorohexidine that will be used it's two percent in 70 percent of isopropyl alcohol and the technique of using or opening the uh, chlorohexidine applicator it's by breaking the open of the ampoule which it's already included in the kit of central line insertion and we will hold the applicator down to allow the solution to come and hold the opening of the ampoule salt and will saturate the bath uh, later on, we'll press over the sponge against the skin that we will apply chlorohexidine solution by using back and uh, forth friction scrub for at least 30 seconds. We will do not and we should not wipe or blot the solution from uh, or over the, uh, the skin. And that will allow the antiseptic solution time to dry completely before puncturing the site its maximum two minutes. Type of antiseptic solution. Uh, it's the type of chlorhexidine using. Uh, the rationale of using chlorhexidine is to minimize the normal flora contamination with, of a bloodstream and causing mostly of most cases collapsing. It's up to the birth weight and uh, the age, actually. Using chlorhexidine with the patient to less than four weeks and with a, a weight of uh, less than 1,000 or equal to 1,500 gram, it's 2% of chlorhexidine. If the birth weight of the patient is greater than 1,500 gram and the age is greater than four weeks, we will use the 2% chlorhexidine in alcohol as the adult and pediatric. And it's very important that the physician, treating physician, will assess the skin maturation before chlorhexidine use to avoid irritation or pain with the neonate patient. In catheter site selection, if we can divide it to two categories, the lower risk category and the greater risk category, we can say the subclavian vein site is associated with lower risk of eclipse than internal jugular vein, and it's the most site preferred and recommended of insertion central line. On the other hand, the most greater risk of infection is associated with the femoral site because it's near to the groin area, especially with overweight adult patients. And the physician, before insertion, the uh, catheter or the central line, they must determine the risk and benefit of using any vein. We just mentioned a while ago that the most recommended site for insertion central line is subclavian vein catheter or subclavian th site. But there's some contraindication that will prevent the healthcare provider to use the subclavian as insertion site of central line. One of them, if we have a trauma to the clavicle interior proximal ribs or on the subclavian vessels, or if the patient in anticoagulation therapy or bleeding disorder that will we will avoid inserting in the central line in the subclavian site. If we have uh, destroyed local anatomy or some damage in the vascular injury, 
uh, site as subclavian or previous surgery or radiation history, we will not be able to insert the catheter in the subclavian site. If there is infection at the insertion site or if the healthcare provider are an uh, expert with insertion at the site, if the patient and cooperative, because more damage will happen for that vessels and its main uh, access or circulation vessels, so we should not insert the catheter on that site. And if the patient has higher risk for pneumothorax, we should avoid uh, accessing of subclavian frame that will cause more infection and pneumothorax. It's one of the serious complications that we should avoid. Ultrasound guidance to place central venous catheter. It's one of the new item added or uh, enhanced and improved the bundle of the central line insertion. Uh, the high quality evidence based practice that suggested uh, use of ultrasound guidance to place the central venous catheter. It will reduce the number of cannulation, the number of attempts to insert the catheter and will be in the right place and placed well. That will uh, minimize the complication of the several attempts of cannulation or inserting central line, which will minimize the risk of infection, sure. The ultrasound guidance Yes, it's very important, but should only be implemented when the ultrasound devices are available and the staff are fully trained in its technique because it, have, uh, it has a specific technique which should be a septic technique because as we said, the central line, it's in case of procedure, um, it's inserting catheter on the heart or close with the greatest vessels of the heart which will affect the systemic circulation for each patient. Central line bundles are composed of two aspects. The first one was insertion, the second one it's the maintenance. So the component of central line maintenance bundle it's five components. It's a set of evidence-based practice designed to prevent central line associated bloodstream infection collapse during the ongoing care and maintenance of central venous catheter. The first component is hand hygiene and aseptic technique. The second is daily review assessment of catheter necessity. The third is proper dressing choice. The fourth is proper frequency of dressing change. The fifth, it's a proper replacement of administrative sets. Using a central line maintenance bundle, it's very important to reduce collapse rate and to minimize the incidence of bloodstream infection. The first component of the maintenance bundle, as well the insertion and any care of the patient, always it's hand hygiene. Hand hygiene and aseptic technique it should be performed before and after accessing or preparing or replacing or inserting or changing dressing of central line. And uh, we should pay attention before accessing the part of the central line. Always we should disinfect it by using chlorhexidine or pathogen iodine or 70% of alcohol with chlorhexidine. But always we should follow the sterile devices technique and aseptic technique and high hand hygiene especially with the central line catheter to minimize the incidence of collapse and we should also additionally pay attention for giving bath for the ICU patient who are less than two months of age with chlorhexidine on daily basis that to minimize the skin flora contamination of the bloodstream which the most cause of collapse the second component is daily review and assessment of catheter necessity that we have to remove the unnecessary catheter or access that uh, inserted to the patient or uh, due to change we should remove always by um, the unnecessary catheter and we should keep in the daily review assessment of the catheter necessity and indication of use. Our third component is the proper dressing of uh, choice. There is already guideline of dressing that should be used with and performed with the uh, central line insertion. We are using the chlorhexidine ingredient uh, dressing, which should be used only for adult patients. Um, 
We are, the rationale of not using that chlorhexidine dressing with the pediatric patient, first, the maturation of the skin is different, and the second, it's um, this kind of dressing may will cause irritation and will enhance the infection of the uh, central line catheter insertion with the pediatric and uh, mostly of the pediatric age we are using umbilical catheter instead of central line catheter. Uh, we are using the transparent and semi membrane dressing uh, that to enhance the visualizing any sign and symptoms of the uh, catheter site uh, infection. The goes it's unpreferred to use only with some cases if the site is bleed uh, there's bleeding on the site or oozing or the patient is a diaphoretic patient. The fourth component is the proper frequency of dressing change. We already got familiar with the dressing that we will use to, uh, at the site of the insertion on the site of central line. There is already a guideline of changing the dressing. It should be replaced every seven days if it's clean. There is no sign and symptoms of any uh, infection, we should keep it for seven days. But if we have a bleeding or oozing or uh, a sign and uh, uh, symptoms of infection, we should replace the dressing as well as the catheter itself. Uh, the ghost dressing, as we mentioned, we can use it only if there is a bleeding or oozing that should be replaced within every uh, two days or when it's sold, uh, solid already. Uh, the fifth uh, component, the proper replacement of administrative sets. Um, the accessing of, uh, as we said already, the indication of inserting a central line catheter is used for medicating or neutron. And one of the medication used or neutron, it's maybe it's, if it's used for blood, uh, product or uh, fat process, we have to use, we have to replace the IV sets within 24 hours. But if um, we have used other uh, type of medication, we can keep it for uh, at least uh, seven days. The fifth, it's a proper replacement of administrative sets. Uh, if we are using the sets for blood product or fat emulsions are administrated, we have to change the tube within 24 hours uh, of initiating the infusion. That means after we already finish and consume the uh, blood products that uh, the aim of using the sets it's for blood we have to discard it after 24 hours uh, if the patient use it for uh, uh, for the fifth is a proper replacement of administrative sets it's uh, we can Say so it has uh, three categories if we are using the sets for blood product or um, fat uh, emulsions medications, we have to replace the set after 24 hours of using. If we are using uh, uh, anesthetic or sedation use, we should discard it. Uh, the tubing used after 6 or 12 hours or when the file changed. If we are using uh, the regular use of uh, regular medication, antibiotic or fluid, we should discard it every 4 hour days or at least every 7 days. If implementing the bundle and applying the bundle and right standard continuous approach. It's important to step. The compliance monitoring, it's the balance of each step of the bundle and it's most important. So, uh, because it's regular auditing and assessment for the uh, implementing of the bundle and it gives us feedback about the mechanism or if there is any gap need to be enhanced because the only main aspect of applying or choosing to use the bundle insertion 
uh, to minimize the infection and to prevent any uh, incidence of eclampsia and to enhance the patient safety and to improve the quality of care. Uh, the third uh, purpose or aim is addressing barrier to uh, compliance. Any gap that faced during applying a compliance that it will be shown in our monitoring compliance. And the fourth important uh, aspect is celebrating the success and improvement. Sure, it's not only a punishment uh, tools. No, it actually giving us the feedback, clear insight about how we are improving. If we had minimum of incidents and later on we will have zero incidents, that it's something, um, uh, some kind of achievement that need uh, to be celebrated and to enhance and to uh, keep the consistency approach and the standardization of using the bundle and we will be compliant by applying and implementing each patient uh, safety bundle to optimize the patient safety as it's the aim of using the bundles and to enhance our practice to improve the quality of care for each patient. Implementing the bundles, it's the first important step. Using the compliance monitoring tools, it's the most important step. It will give us the feedback if there is any gap need more education and training, and which training programs uh, should be targeted, and the ongoing education on bundle components also should be one of the most important aspects on focus. Uh, to give us a qualified healthcare provider and more safety environment and most satisfaction for each patient going on and face a procedure like central line insertion. Once we will have good uh, education and training program, good monitoring compliance tool, good implementation for each bundle components, we will reach to the goal of preventing a primary goal preventing the collapse, you reduce the incidence and optimizing the patient safety and the quality of care and enhance the healthcare facility system and healthcare system itself to be more satisfied, qualified actually facility and healthcare provider approach. Thank you all for listening and I hope we are all committed to patient safety and it will be our main goal ever and we will give the best to be the best with the, to maintain the quality of patient care.